2nd Samuel, 2nd Samuel chapter 6 and verse uh, 6 to 11. But when they came to the threshing floor of Nacon, Uzzah reached out toward the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen nearly upset it, and the anger of the Lord burned against Uzzah, and God struck him down there for his irreverence, and he died there by the ark of God. David became angry because of the Lord's outburst against Uzzah, and that place is called Perez Uzzah to this day. So David was afraid of the Lord that day, and he said, How can the ark of the Lord come to me? And David was unwilling to move the ark of the Lord into the city of David with him. But David took it aside to the house of Obed-Edom, the, the Gittite. Thus the ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, three months, and the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. If ever there was a difficult passage in scripture it might be this one um, and when we come upon it uh, in, in, in 2 Samuel uh, really it, it, it causes a lot of questions. I, I get a lot of questions when we, whenever we're studying this or I'm talking about this chapter um, people ask questions how why would God do that? I mean he was just trying to stop it falling off this um, card. Why would God strike him down and kill him for his irreverence? And um, really, there's, there's not um, an easy answer for that uh, thing, because um, I think what we're being shown is something beyond the actual event. Uh, whatever the details, God is God. He is more fair, more just, more righteous, um, more everything, more loving than you and I. And so uh, if you've walked a while with the Lord and if you've received his mercy and his grace and you know your complete undeservedness of that grace and that mercy, then, then maybe you could ascribe your, mis your lack of understanding about this account and, and just put that down as something that maybe you'll ask God about when you see him or uh, maybe you'll just trust that the God who saved you and didn't need to is a God who always, is always good. And always acts justly and then if you can do that then let's move on a little bit and see what do we see in this passage that God is telling us about himself and I think one thing that we see above all else is the holiness of God you cannot touch God you cannot touch God God is holy 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 he is outside of our our uh, everything he is not like us he is holy and totally different to us he is holy he is holy 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 and you and I cannot understand the depth of that holiness in fact when we try to understand what does it mean to be holy to be totally good totally righteous no fault no no um no blemish nothing nothing when we try to understand what that means God gives us a picture of himself in Jesus and he says this is what it cost to uphold my holiness this is what it cost to um, for you to be able to come close to me the God who is holy 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 and honestly I'm not sure that we will ever totally understand that truth, that Jesus died to uphold the holiness of God, that he died to, uh, yes, he died to make a way for you and I to get to God. If you like, he died to make a way for you and I to reach out and touch the ark of God. He made that way for us but it cost his life. It wasn't a cheap way. It wasn't a way that uh, was easy. It was a hard, hard way. So hard, in fact, that Jesus would pray in Luke, Lord, Father, if it is possible, take this cup from me. He would pray that three times before he surrendered and said, yet nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Understanding 
that the way to salvation, the way to make it possible for you and I to come to our God, to come close to him, to touch, if you like, to touch the very ark of God, it cost the life of God in the form of his son. And really, I don't understand. I don't understand the fullness and the depth of that. And I want to. I want to understand. I want to understand the holiness of my God in a day when his holiness seems to have been completely forgotten, even by his people. When, what, when we're taught and we hear that we are, we are friends with Jesus, we, we are mates with him, we can go and chat to him and we can invite him in and give him a cup of coffee and we can take him to the pub with us and we can take him anywhere with us. We are losing sight of the very holiness of God that Jesus died to uphold. And, um, yeah, I think for me, the enormity and the reality of the holiness of God that I see here in this, this tiny vignette about uh, Yuza or Uza, however we pronounce his name, uh, I, I, I want to get to grips with this so that I can have this reverential awe at the holiness and the greatness and the majesty of God at the same time as understanding the end of this one little verse thus the ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite three months and the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household I want to come to an understanding of the holiness of God at the same time as being able to lay hold of the truth that that God, that holy, holy, holy God, that God dwells within me and has blessed me by his presence. Can you see? Um, yeah, you can. You can see probably better than me. And that's where I am. That's where I am today, wanting to understand all that it means to, to, to reverence and, and fear and hold in awe this God who would die on my behalf to make the way for me to get to him and at the same time uphold his own holiness, his own righteousness. I'm going to dig and dig and dig and um, I'm, I think I'm going to use Psalm 139, which is where we are at the moment in the Psalms, and read through some of those uh, sentences in Psalm 139 and... Um, I think there's 176 verses and probably four of them, five of them maybe, don't talk about the word of God. I want to understand how I can come and understand the, the holiness of God through his word and so that I can make sure that I don't, um, whilst laying hold of my fellowship with this God, my, my, uh, my family tie and connection with this God, that I don't forego and lay aside and forget the holiness of the God who died for me. Um, yeah, I'll see you next time.